Hey friends, welcome to Power Coat Music. In this presentation, we are going to do a quick overview of the Yamaha DM7 Compact 72 channel digital mixer. After the release of the Yamaha DM3 digital mixer model series, some felt this product line fell short in terms of inputs, onboard features, and functionality. With this, on June 6, 2023, Yamaha released the DM7 series of professional digital mixers, which is the next level of the DM model line. The new DM7 model series of digital mixers consists of five different models. This includes the DM7 EX 120 channel digital mixer, which retails for $35,000. The second is the DM7EX Compact 72 channel digital mixer, which retails for $20,000. The DM7 120 channel digital mixer, which retails for $30,000. And the DM7 Compact 72 channel digital mixer, which retails for $15,000. As you can see, Yamaha spared no expense. Again, the focus of this presentation is the DM7 Compact 72 channel digital mixer. In this overview, we'll cover the unit's features, technical specifications, front and top panel controls, and back panel. Without further ado, let's dive into the Yamaha DM7 Compact's features. The unit has built-in digital signal processing effects and an audio interface that works with Yamaha's VST Rackdoll remote mode with transport control. The unit has AI assist features, which can adapt its functions to your specific workflow. So whether you like it or not, if you buy this unit, AI is working its way into your studio. The unit also has onboard Dante networking and the DM7 series also features a rear panel USB-C port with an 18 input output audio interface functionality for recording, distribution, playback, and connection to conferencing systems and control via MIDI devices and DAWs. Now DM7 Compact also supports the following Yamaha audio interface expansion cards. This is pretty cool. It has expansion cards in the back that you can pull in and out for flexibility, and of course, expansion. Now these cards include the PY64MD, which is an audio interface card that provides MADI connectivity, handling up to 64 input and 64 output channels of 96 KHC to 24 bit digital audio. The second audio interface card is the PY8AE. Now this card provides AES and EBU connectivity handling up to eight input and eight output channels of 96 KHC and 24 bit digital audio. The final card is the PY MIDI GPI interface card. Now this card provides MIDI and GPI connectivity equipped with MIDI DIN ports that can handle up to five input and five output channels of GPI. Moving on, the unit also has a, what we, what Yamaha calls a split mode, which gives, or should I say, which divides the input channels, scenes, and mixed buses, letting one DM7 compact unit function like two separate mixers. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Now this feature is new and unique to Yamaha. The unit supports a range of software and apps, including the DM7 editor, the DM7 stage mix, the monitor mix, and console file converter applications. The ProVisionaire control and ProVisionaire touch uh, softwares are also supported, which allow offline preparation, wireless mixing, monitor mixing, and control, which also includes the peripheral equipment. The unit includes an open sound control OSC server function, which enables the console to be controlled from an OSC compatible device. DMC or the DMC Compact is also built on the features and sound of Yamaha's legendary 
Rivage PM series, and it can be mounted in a standard 19 inch rack. Let's move on to the Yamaha DM7 Compact's technical specifications. On your screen now, we have a table that consists of two columns. The first column are the technical specification categories, and the second column are the technical specification details. What we're going to do is go down this table row by row to check out the tech specs, starting with the first column and first row, which are the input mixing channels. There are 72 inputs, 48 mix, 12 matrix, and 2 stereo. The next row are the faders, which consist of 16 total 100 millimeter touch sensitive motorized faders. The next row are the buses. They're broken down by 48 mix, 12 matrix, and 2 stereo. And the next row is the channel strip sections, which there are 12 main strips plus 4 substrips. Next are the processing slots, which are 64 assignable. And the Yamaha FX slots are 16 assignable. And the unit also has 4 assignable inserts per channel. The next row is the sampling external clock and frequency range, which ranges from 48 kHz to 96 kHz at plus 200 ppm. The next row is sampling internal clock and frequency, which is basically 48 kHz to 96 kHz. The next row are the screens. There are two of them. The first screen is a 12.1 multi-touch multi screen, and the second is a 7-inch multi-touch screen. When it comes to analog I.O., which is the next row, there are 16 inputs and 16 outputs. For the Dante interface, there is 144 in and 144 out. For the e AES EBU interface, there's one out for that. And when it comes to slots, there's one PY slot. Now this PY slot accommodates the expansion audio interface cards that we talked about earlier. So there's one slot that you can swap out cards for that. The next row is the USB audio interface, which is 18 in and 18 out. The next row is your power supply. We have a redundant built-in power supply with the unit. The next row is the power requirements. You can check out the specs there. And below that, is the power consumption, which is 240 watts. The next row are the dimensions of the unit, which are broken down by width, height, and depth. And the last but not least is the weight, which the unit weighs in at 36.4 pounds, which is pretty heavy for a compact digital mixer, but there you have it. We'll now check out the Yamaha DM7 Compact's top and front panel controls starting with the top panel controls. The unit has two touch screens. These are capacitive multi-touch screens. Next, we have the home button. Use this button to recall and toggle between the overview and selected channel view screens. Next, we have the fader bank button. This button assigns the function to the faders on the panel. After that, we have the Sends On Fader button. Use this button to switch the Sends On Fader mode on or off. When this mode is turned on, you can use the channel strips to adjust the send level of the signals sent to the mix matrix bus. After that, we have the Encoder Mode button. Use these keys to display the screen on the corresponding base screen to switch between functions for the encoders located below the touch screens. These encoders feature the following two functions. Number one, this screen encoder function. Up to 12 parameters can be assigned to the encoders via the touch screens. The second function is the channel encoder function. Parameters for 12 channels on the channel strips can be assigned to the encoders using this function. Moving on, we have the channel strip sections. This enables you to adjust the main parameters for the currently selected channels. It's that simple. After that, we have the touch and turn knob. Use this knob to control the parameter of the knob selected via the touch screens. Next, we have the shift button. Combined with other keys, you use this button, you push this button and another key to perform a specific function. Moving on, we have the user-defined keys. 
they enable you to control the assigned function. Now use the bank button to switch banks. Next we have the main section. This section enables you to adjust the main parameters for the assigned channels. Now by default, stereo A and stereo B are assigned to channels C and D. Moving on, we have the LED lighting bar. This illuminates the operation panel in a dark space or a dark place. Next are the USB connectors. These are USB type A connectors. Use these connectors to connect a USB storage device, such as a USB flash drive. The, support, the supported USB flash drive formats are FAT16 and FAT32. Let's move on to the front panel controls, and there are two of them. The first is the phone's level. Now you use this knob to adjust the level of the signal output from the phone output jack. The second is the phone's jack. Now this is a headphone socket for monitoring the monitor or cue signal. Finally, we'll review the Yamaha DM7 Compact's back panel. We'll start with the Omni Out section. These are 16 balance XLR 3-pin chassis output connectors that transmit analog audio signals. Moving on, we have the input section. These are 16 balance XLR three hole chassis input connectors for analog audio signals from line level devices or microphones. Moving on, we have the cooling vent. Now, this product is equipped with a cooling fan. This vent lets warm air escape from the unit. So make sure that you don't block it uh, you don't block this vent with any object because the air is taken in through ventilation ports at the rear and under the front of the unit. Moving on, we have the AC in connectors, both A and B. Use these sockets to connect the supply power cords. Simple enough. After that, we have the power switches, and there are two of them. This toggles between power on and off. Now, if you plan not to use the unit for a long period of time, remove the cords from the AC outlets. Simple enough, right? After that, we have the AES EBU out. Now this out connector is a balance XLR three pin chassis output connector for digital audio signals in the AES EBU format. After that, we have the TCN. This is a balance XLR three hole chassis input connector that accepts time code signals from the connected external device. After that, we have the world clock out and in. These are BNC sockets used to transmit and receive world clock signals to and from an external device. The world clock in is internally terminated by a 75 ohm resistor. Moving on, we have the GPI. This is a D sub 15 hole chassis connector that allows communication that is five in and five out with a GPI equipped external device. Moving on, we have the PI card slot, which enables you to install a PI expansion audio interface card to expand the number of I.O. ports. Moving on, we have the Dante primary and secondary port. These connectors are used to connect to other Dante audio network devices. Moving on, we have the Link ACT. Now these indicators show the communication status of the primary and secondary uh, Dante ports respectively. If the Ethernet cables are connected properly, the indicators will flash rapidly. After that, we have the 1G. These indicators light when the Dante network is functioning as a gigabit Ethernet. After that, we have the USB to host. This is a USB type C connector 2.0. By connecting a computer here, via USB cable, the console can function as up to an 18 in, 18 out, 96 KHC 32 bit, or a 48 KHC 32 bit audio interface. It also enables you to use USB MIDI to control any DMC set, or should I say DM7 series unit, and remotely control DAW software. Moving on, we have the network connector. 
This is an RJ45 connector that allows the unit to be connected to a computer via an Ethernet cable and CAT5 or higher is recommended. Last but not least is the grounding screw. Now each supplied power cord features a three prong plug. If the AC outlets are grounded, this product will be properly grounded through the power cords. Also grounding this screw may effectively eliminate noise such as hum and other interfe interference. Well friends, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our group. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you think about this content. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. Oh, while you're here, check out some of the music and other videos and playlists because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you soon.